How's it going, Nahida? I'm done with the parts that needed my involvement to complete. Although it's my first time working with the Akasha like this, its internal structure and operation procedures are easy for me to understand. Greater Lord Rukadavata's design is truly brilliant. Oh, also, this is for you. Huh? What's this little floaty thingy? It's a small device I put together just now. You can think of it as an upgraded Akasha terminal. You may not need it right now, but it should be helpful in certain situations. Wait! This thing has the same characteristics as Paimon! We're both small things that float! Oh, all the things that make Paimon special got copied! When Paimon appears with the Traveler from now on, people won't remember Paimon because she isn't unique anymore! <laughs> it's alright, Paimon. It can't replace you. It's only a flying device, but you're the Traveler's irreplaceable friend. <sighs> you're so good at comforting people, Nahida. If only the Traveler was as smart as you. Hmm? I was simply telling you what I feel to be the truth. I wasn't trying to comfort you. Nahida, you're natural at this. What you just said made Paimon even happier. By the way... There's something I need to confess. Even though I'm the Archon and in control of myself again, I'm not very good at fighting. You may have heard that an Archon's power is derived from their people's faith. However, I'm not as well loved as Greater Lord Rukadavata. If we get into a situation where combat is our only option, I'll have to count on you, and I'll do my best to provide support. I'm glad I can rely on you. Hmm. So the God of Wisdom isn't good at fighting? That actually sounds about right. I've located where the false God is. Time is of the essence, so let's skip to it. What is this place? Is this really the way we need to go? Wow... Who would have thought there'd be a place like this hidden right slap bang in the middle of the city? The sages wanted to realize their god creation plan without being discovered. The safest and most convenient way would be to build within the academia itself. Hmm... That's true. They were already hiding one god, so why not two? Judging from the structure here, the project is a huge undertaking. The sages really saw the god creation plan as their ultimate goal. But this place doesn't look like it could have been constructed by the academia alone. The Fatui under the doctor sure didn't hold back. They provided a lot of technological support. Yeah! Or else they wouldn't have been that generous. Is that it though? I've always felt that this doctor is different from the academia sages. He doesn't seem to share their sense of urgency. Instead of being interested in the end product, it's like he's enjoying the experimental process. Hmm. The Fatui Harbingers are all such weirdos. So, the doctor being weird is actually normal. So, this Fatui that they're trying to turn into a god is called the Balladeer? We had previously come into contact with his consciousness. He harbors particularly strong obsessions. One is the desire for a gnosis, since he was created to be the vessel for one. The other obsession is probably related to his past. I can't quite explain it. Paimon knows that he was a prototype puppet for the Raiden Shogun before he became a Fatui Harbinger. That's why he wants a gnosis so badly. There's no way he'd willingly be a test subject. Now with that temper and ego of his... It sounds like you know the Balladeer quite well. I see. Tell me more about him and what he's like. The more we know now, the better we can plan for and react to any future situation. Ah, I see. How fascinating. Alright, time to go. 
Let's get through here and meet him in person. Looking at its operational status, we must prepare for the worst. The god they wanted to create is likely close to completion or already completed. Oh no, what should we do? Paimon can't imagine how hard it would be to fight against that Fatui Harbinger with a Gnosis. Are you nervous, Paimon? If you really want to know, of course Paimon's nervous. Aren't you too, Nahida? Yes, I am. This is probably the first time I faced with a calamity of this degree since my birth. I feel not just nervous, but curious as well. Curious? Curious about what? Curious about her fate. To me, everything we perceive in this world, everything we learn, and everything that happens to us is considered knowledge. And if it's a form of knowledge, then it can be understood. However, only fate is about that which has yet to occur, so it has always drawn my curiosity. So to me, fate is the ultimate knowledge. That's also why I love observing humans and all the things that happen to them. It all brings me great satisfaction. And now, at long last, I'm not just an observer anymore. I will personally experience my own fate with you by my side. <laughs> Isn't this such a wonderfully exciting thing? Ah, so that's what you mean. Paimon thinks she understands what you're feeling. Agreed. Okay, let's continue on. I can sense his aura from here. so eager for my birth. I remember you, Boor, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the traveler. Is he all-knowing and powerful now like greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. So we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. This imposing aura, it really feels like a god! A body that capitalizes on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the Sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. Nahida wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature, Know your place! The strife engraved upon a Gnosis. 
You're talking about the Archon War. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it... All those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first. Encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. <laughs> your judgment is as your existence. Unsubstantial. This is where everything ends, Boor, the god of wisdom. You should know that wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now, where your only option is to face me in combat. Come! Let us reenact a scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? <laughs> you've tried to take my gnosis from me? <clears throat> we just concluded the 168th loop. Did you know that in the effort to create you, the people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles. The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? <laughs> you can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? Come, Traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <gasps> All that battle experience! It's more than that. Compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them... to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Now... 
Eclipse and Mary's wisdom is at your disposal. Meaningless tricks won't save you. Are you done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you. The first sage. A boor. Humans. Filthy humans! yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Erminsoul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadevata. This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. Imagined. Shouldn't Ermansoul be in this realm of consciousness? Yes, that is our destination. But I didn't expect the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadavata to be as polluted as this. Forbidden knowledge? It seems you know about a concept that even I don't completely understand. Could you tell me what you know? seems logical enough. Forbidden knowledge once polluted the desert thousands of years ago, but was successfully repelled thanks to King Deshret's self-sacrifice and Greater Lord Rukadevata nearly exhausting her power. Then, a second instance of forbidden knowledge pollution occurred during the Conria Cataclysm 500 years ago. But I'm afraid it is much more serious this time, with Ermansoul itself already in danger. So... If we're in the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata, and it's also been affected by forbidden knowledge pollution, then does that mean in order to save us, Greater Lord Rukadevata? Yes. It's very possible that she sacrificed her life in the fight against forbidden knowledge. She didn't completely eradicate forbidden knowledge, but if it weren't for her actions, the pollution would have been far more rampant over these past 500 years. The way that everyone, including me, has forgotten everything about forbidden knowledge may very well be due to her restoration of Ermansoul. <laughs> Do you feel sad, Nahida? I 
and just uh, sharing her pain. The pollution of her consciousness here is severe. There is madness, chaos, and pain all around us. Did she fight to resist the forbidden knowledge pollution in such terrible conditions all the way up to her last breath? She even used her last remnant of lucid consciousness to leave a clue for us to follow. Yes, her words were distorted by forbidden knowledge, so that's all we could hear. But now, we have a chance to find the answer to this mystery. We can cross the polluted consciousness until we found the right path to meet with her lucid consciousness. And then... We'll let Greater Lord Ruka Devata tell us the truth in person. Each of us need to be mindful of the state of our own consciousness while we are here. Even with the Gnosis' protection, we must always keep a clear mind. Otherwise, we could go mad at any moment. <sighs> That's so scary! Don't worry, it should be easy enough for you to keep that mind of yours clear, Paimon. Let's go! Are we... in the air? And why is there a huge boat? That's the boat of consciousness, which symbolizes reason. Wow! What are these? The monsters seem to have been affected by them! <laughs> we changed direction! Are we still going the right way, Nahida? Mm hmm Judging from the current route, the boat of consciousness will soon take us out of here. We'll be arriving at our destination soon. How are you feeling? Are your minds still intact? Huh? But everything's been completely normal for Paimon! Hopefully there won't be any more interruptions. This time, we should be able to meet Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Are you saying you've never met Greater Lord Ruka Devata before? No. It seems that my birth and her death took place at the same time. Otherwise, I think she would have given me a little more guidance, and I could have done a better job. Hey, you've done a great job, Nahida! Let's get out of this creepy place and go meet her! So... Is this the place you were talking about? The base of Ermansoul? Well, this is the place. Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? But the one standing over there is. Is that. Mm -hmm. She looks exactly like me. Are you. Greater Lord Ruka Devata? Yes, that's me. Are you surprised by my appearance? Ermin's soul and the surrounding lands have been reproduced here as they were years ago. But this is just a realm of consciousness. We are manifestations of the same nature. Hence why we would appear exactly the same. Hmm? We're... of the same nature? Why? Because you are me, and I am you. You are me in the new samsara. The new samsara? As Greater Lord Ruka Devata, I'm the avatar of Ermansoul. And you are the purest branch snapped from Ermansoul. Imagine it this way. 
Even if a tree dies, its branches will eventually take root and grow, continuing the tree's life in another form. I'm merely the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata. The real me has presumably died a long time ago. Hmm. Judging from your appearance, I've probably been dead for 500 years. But you're finally here. My new self in the samsara. If this is true, then am I going to be a great archon like you someday? Though we share the same nature, our fates are bound to be different. All things have their own fate. When a branch grows into a mature tree, it won't be the same as the original tree. That's why fate is the ultimate knowledge, isn't it? That's a great insight. Yes, very good. It's also precisely why you won't become like me. <sighs> really? But perhaps you may become an even greater Archon than I. I already see a determination in you that I didn't possess in my time. And the future that it leads you to will be yours alone. Along with the blessings from your past experiences. Don't worry. The growth of wisdom is like that of a plant. You only need to wait quietly for the flower to bloom. Come to think of it, the sages never had the faintest inkling of the meaning of wisdom. Thank you. Nothing makes me happier than discovering that the Archon I always admired was in fact myself in another fate. It's so nice to speak with you, Greater Lord Rukadevata. I've always wanted to meet you. The feeling is mutual. From the moment I snapped the branch off Ermin's soul and created you, I've also looked forward to talking with you. Could you tell me why you wanted to create me? And what exactly happened when you died? Ah, uh, I see. You're here seeking answers, right? Everything that day, even the sky itself, changed into a color like this. At that time, the Seven were all summoned to the nation of Conria. Except for me. I had a more important task to attend to. I had to protect Erminsoul. The disaster occurred together with the pollution of forbidden knowledge. At that very moment, with my consciousness connected to Erminsoul, I sensed something was wrong. The pain started to torment my mind. By the time I reached Ermensoul, it was already displaying signs of corruption. Had I not repelled the pollution of forbidden knowledge with King Deshret thousands of years ago, I might have felt even more hopeless and lost. So what exactly is forbidden knowledge? It's a kind of knowledge that doesn't belong to this world, and a form of truth that can't be understood. It came from the very bottom of the abyss. Even I could never understand it. The world is constantly rejecting it, leading to all kinds of bad phenomena. If we allow forbidden knowledge to pollute Ermensoul, I'm afraid the entirety of Tevat could fall apart. So, there's knowledge that even the God of Wisdom can't understand? At that time, I knew I couldn't repel the forbidden knowledge with my strength alone. Which is why I created a device that compiled human wisdom and named it the Akasha. It's truly the world's most amazing invention. <laughs> Thank you. For a long time, I thought dreams were the fruit of human wisdom. Though it was selfish to do so, I borrowed people's dreams using the Akasha. Then I compiled their wisdom and all of my own power. Well, did it work? Thanks to the wisdom of the people of Sumeru, almost all the forbidden knowledge was cleared from Ermansul. But... things didn't go as smoothly as I thought. I had a terrible headache, which gave me an uneasy feeling. And then... I remembered that my consciousness was also connected with Ermansoul. 
It brought me knowledge and wisdom, but vile corruption as well. From the very beginning, my existence had been polluted by the forbidden knowledge. Oh no! How could that happen? I've experienced that pain in your consciousness. It must have been a horrible experience. Yes, but my feelings weren't important. The important thing was that... Even if I died, my existence and everything related to me would continue to exist in Ermansoul as memories and knowledge. Meaning that the forbidden knowledge couldn't ever be permanently eradicated. And there's no way for me to eliminate myself. It would be a sort of paradox. So, I took the purest branch of Ermansoul as my incarnation in the next samsara and left a trail of clues. All in hopes that you would come here and remove me and my pollution from Ermansoul forever. Wait, no, I can't. <laughs> so you realize what that implies. You are very smart indeed. Ermansoul has all the knowledge and memories of this world. And as you've realized just now, removing me from Ermansoul means I essentially will never have existed in this world. But this is the only way to save Ermansoul. People love you so much and... And they've missed you so much over the past 500 years. I... I am exactly the same. So how... How can we just... Forget you like this? Is there really no other way? There must be something else I can do. You're the god of wisdom, Boor. You should know that there is no other way. But this... This is so cruel. I don't want to forget you. No need to feel so sad, Boor. As someone who delights in wisdom, you should feel joy at finally finding the answer. These are the words in their entirety. The answer you've been seeking all along. Let the world completely forget me. We all nestle under the great tree of wisdom, peering out to perceive the world. From the earth and from the rain, we perceive its wonders until we become a white bird to perch atop a branch and finally snap off the most important leaf. Once upon a time, I alone dreamed in this world. In my dreams, everybody would also dream after they fell asleep. Wild and wonderful thoughts would emerge from their minds. Some tumbled to the ground, and others floated to the sky. Connecting all things in the world into one dazzling net. Among a plethora of worlds were numerous smaller worlds, all of fate, finding within the tapestry their brilliant glow. I gradually understood that these indescribable and constantly changing things are the most profound things in the world. Only they can completely repel the madness. Only dreams can awaken consciousness from the deepest darkness. I'm the one who posed this question yet also the one who sought a solution. Saving the world with the dreams of the people used to be my answer. And now, you've also found your own answer, and I shall return all the dreams to the people. Goodbye.
people of Sumeru. May you be blessed tonight with the sweetest of dreams. Now, we use the power of two Gnosis to successfully connect with the Ermin Soul Consciousness from 500 years ago. Then, we remove the remaining pollution from Ermin Soul. Yeah, what's wrong? Weren't you there just now? I've been waiting here far too long, but finally I have the chance to be alone with you. All the precious time I wasted has finally paid off. The Doctor! What have you done? Just a type of sound wave that can quickly put defenseless people into a dream. As I expected, it doesn't have any effect on gods. This is the only thing of interest I found among the Sage's research. I thought I'd take it for a little... spin. Don't worry. I know you would never forgive me if I actually killed them. I'm here to negotiate with you. Naturally, I won't do anything dangerous that could potentially damage our relationship. Negotiate with me? I heard you had already left Sumeru. Why are you here again now? I left Sumeru, but I also stayed in Sumeru. Even the God of Wisdom is restricted by the habits of cognition. How disappointing. You mean... there are many different versions of you in this world? An astute guess. Even the same individual will have different cognitions at different ages. A long time ago, I made a major decision in hopes of preserving all my perspectives of how I observed the world. Observation is the first step of any experiment, but observing the current world doesn't satisfy me. It lacks an important dimension, that of time. So I saved segments of all my ages and made them into independent individuals. That's all there is to it. Indulge me. How does the God of Wisdom find my method of seeking knowledge? It's an insult to the very concept of life. Life inherently has many rules and restrictions, each with its own significance and reason to exist. They can't be broken on a whim. <laughs> Good. Amazing, even. Indeed, it's difficult for humans to make peace with themselves. Not to mention oneself from a different period. Since you're in the Academia, why wait until now to show up? You could very well have stopped us and helped that fake god. Simple. Let me ask you this. Would any staff member ever help the subject in the middle of an experiment? It was my experiment. So why should I interfere with the results? The Academia saw the plan to create a god as their ultimate goal, yet you only saw it as an ordinary experiment. You... you really are crazy. If the experiment succeeded, you would have had a new god on your hands. How would you have faced your own god then? Would you still take the same stance? Would you still hold the same view of yourself? 
I'm first and foremost a scholar. These results should be left to the judgment of the hypothetical me confronted with that outcome. But you're right. And that's exactly why I'm disappointed with the conclusion of this experiment. As an individual, you don't have any sense of belonging. You seem to have even fewer convictions than a typical scholar. Oh no, I certainly have my own convictions. They just don't fit your standards, that's all. All right, that's enough conversation for today. The experiment is over, and it's time to tidy up the equipment and reclaim any useful materials. For example, the Gnosis. <laughs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, you're an intelligent Archon. I'm sure you understand the disparity in our combat abilities at this time. Besides, you have no way to use that Electro-Gnosis in battle. Didn't you say you were here to negotiate with me? Somehow, it's starting to seem like you intend to take it by force now. <laughs> I'm merely stating a fact. After all, I'm also a scholar. Naturally, I hope to show proper respect and dignity to the God of Wisdom. Your hypocrisy is built on absolute confidence. I understand your scheme, but... What if I were to destroy the Gnosis now, and awaken the Heavenly Principles? Awaken... the Heavenly Principles? Hmm... Do you think that's really possible? The Heavenly Principles have been silent for many years, but the Gnosis are symbols of their control over Tevat and all the laws. Will the destruction of a Gnosis attract the attention of the Heavenly Principles? And if so, how do the Fatui plan to deal with the consequences? Do you dare to gamble such a possibility with me? <laughs> gamble? How surprising. I thought you would show evidence or use rigorous reasoning to prove your point. The word gamble is the last thing I expected to hear from the God of Wisdom. But this is a clever move. You must have seen through me when I first captured your consciousness. As a scholar, I respect all possibilities. This has always been my principle and is an essential trait as an experimenter. Indeed, I can't ignore this possibility. So tell me then, what are your conditions? This foreign Gnosis will only lead to disaster if it stays in Sumeru. But this Electro Gnosis is the prize I obtained after defeating one of your fellow Harbingers. Now, as the one who initiated this cascade of events, shouldn't you pay the corresponding price? Price? Interesting. What price would you have me pay? How about erasing all your other segments? <laughs> so this is how you wish to restrict me, the most threatening opponent of the Nation of Wisdom. What you request of me is like plucking out the eyes I have placed in the dimension of time. Segments are extraordinarily difficult to make. They require extremely rare resources and enormous amounts of time and effort, requiring me to destroy them all here and now. Bravo. A suitably wise decision on your part. Yes, how very interesting. Can I assume that you have long been wary of me? Among all the versions of me, this segment you see now is the most selfish. If it weren't me, your idea wouldn't have worked. What did you see when you were imprisoned? You were observing me. And that's how you know I've long grown tired of their doubts and endless arguments. Like you said, it's difficult to make peace with yourself. Being as smart as you are, have you managed to do that? Hmm. I see. If you think all those versions of me are worth a gnosis, then deal. You sure didn't hesitate much. 
Is the relationship between all the versions of you really that bad? I don't think there's any need to dwell on that. The surplus versions of me can be exchanged for a Gnosis. Do you think anyone can offer themselves at a higher price? Besides, with my abilities, it's only a matter of time until I find better perspectives. Perhaps it's best to say, you're just temporarily ahead. But what I'd like to know is, how can you be sure that I've really erased them? I can see your remaining honesty. <laughs> what a ridiculous decision! Sheer you can't be serious! How could I have been you so would short sighted? You think that this is the end? Wait, I'll have my revenge. You'll make Good this riddance. moment count. You, you will regret this. Well, have you confirmed that it's complete? Here, take it. The future of Sumeru City will be in my hands alone. I will shut down the Akasha and let curiosity and the thirst for knowledge drive the realm of academics once again. There won't be any further gaps for you to exploit. It truly pains me that my academic achievements have never been appreciated in my homeland. Of course, I have no interest in being rejected by this city for a third time. Another chess piece. And where is your dendronosis? Don't be greedy, Harbinger of Snezhnaya. No, this is a different transaction. If you intend to turn off the Akasha anyway, then there's no further use for the Gnosis of Sumeru, is there? Besides, isn't it the Archon's duty to deliver what's desired of the Seeker? Oh, judging from your expression, you don't seem to find the idea very agreeable. Then let's think of it this way. Since you're the god of wisdom, how about I exchange some knowledge with you? People exchanging knowledge with the god of wisdom is the stuff of legends. Yet here you wish to exchange knowledge for the god of wisdom's property. Arrogant as that is, it has piqued my interest. Let me ask you. Have you, in all your mighty knowledge, ever heard the rumor that the skies of Tevat are fake? Huh? That's the secret hidden by Ermin's soul concerning the truth of this world. Once I finish telling you about this, it will be time for me to say goodbye. With negotiations, we've all gotten what we wanted. I'm very glad I got to meet you like this. Your arrogance may know no bounds, and convictions may mean nothing to you. But I'll still listen to what you have to say. Okay, wake her up. Are you awake? Kali says it's time for breakfast. Come on, get up! Good morning! How are you feeling today? Good to hear. It looks like we've recovered pretty well. Not even Tainari could stop us from going out now, right? breakfast today. Please have a taste. I hope you'll like it. <sighs> it's nice to have you here so we can eat something yummy. Well, now that I've recovered from Elizar, 
I'm feeling better than ever. I can even prepare four or five meals a day now. And Paimon bets they're all delicious. Oh, by the way, someone brought a letter for you after you went to sleep last night. Nope. Paimon wanted to read the letter with you after you woke up. So Paimon didn't open it. All right, let's read it now. Oh, it's from Milu. Ahem. <clears throat> We're going to hold a feast at the Grand Bazaar and celebrate Sino's reinstatement as the General Mahamatra. As heroes of Sumeru, please be sure to attend. I'll wait for you. Hmm. The date of the banquet is written on the back. It's in two days. Oh, I've also heard that you've become oh. heroes here as well. That's amazing. Sometimes I'm really envious of strong and confident people like you. Oh, <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the Grand Bazaar to have a look. Oh, before you leave, be sure to inform Master Tainari. Tainari! Good morning. How do you feel today? We feel much better. How about you? I'm recovering well. Thanks for asking. Well, from the looks of it, you seem to be already busy with Brent again. It's fine. I'm not that busy, really. The Elazar patients have recovered, as well as Hapasia. For now, I only need to tend to my Forest Watcher duties. It seems once Erminsoul started getting better, everything else started to recover, too. Yes, but there are still some residual effects. The withering is one example. Though it won't spread anymore, the existing zones won't just disappear. We forest rangers will still need to do the work. By the way, we have some good news. Sino got his position back. <laughs> this news is hardly new. He had already mentioned it to me before. Huh? You mean he was already here? Why did he come to say hi to us? He visited once, but he was afraid of disturbing you while you were resting. He just asked me a few questions and left. Then you probably already know all about the celebration feast. Celebration feast? No, I haven't heard anything about that. Huh? But didn't Nilo say in her letter that they would celebrate Sino? He didn't tell you? Hmm. Perhaps, or alternatively, he doesn't know about it either. Uh, come to think of it, Sino doesn't seem like the type who'd enjoy a celebration feast. You and Kale are both Sino's close friends. Why don't you come to the feast with us? Kale has taken over some of my tasks these days. I don't think she'll have time for it. Not to mention me. You see, some VIPs have come to the forest recently. Huh? VIPs? Very important Paimons? Well, technically speaking, they are former VIPs. The sages involved in recent incidents have begun their training in the Avidya forest, and the people they had previously imprisoned have all been released. Yes, he's a little weak, but he isn't injured and his condition is stable. Lesser Lord Kusanali, in her boundless mercy, has decided to spare Azar and the other wrongdoers. Supposedly, they were ashamed of their shallow ideologies and have decided to dedicate the rest of their lives to cultivating wisdom in the Avidya forest. When they learned that Lesser Lord Kusanali had defeated the Balladeer and saved Ermensoul, they were shocked at first, but also became happy feeling that the sacred light guiding them on the path of discovering wisdom had begun to shine once again. As a result, work has increased for the forest rangers. That sounds really exhausting. There's nothing we can do, really. But that's another topic. Back to the matter at hand. Are you two planning to head out? Ah, right! We're here to request permission to head out. Would that be okay? You've recovered well. You may go, but be careful. Well, there won't be any problems if the feast starts at that time. Everything has already been prepared. Mr. Zubair, I finished telling things up here. Well, except for the guests. <sighs> Is a simple reply really that much to ask of our guests? It's affecting our arrangements. Oh, it'll be fine. Besides, it never hurts to get things ready in advance. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. The feast will be held sooner or later, right? Hey, Milu! 
Traveler, Paimon! We got your letters! Here we are! You're the best! The other guests haven't even replied yet. Huh? Are we the only ones that have arrived? Yeah. I had someone deliver letters to all of our guests. But maybe everyone is still busy with other things. Look, I get it. Sumeru is in an extremely important period of transition right now, but even if your friends are important figures, they shouldn't just ignore your request like this. Nilu is Sumeru's number one celebrity, after all. <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am to talk to people with good taste. If you consider enjoying Nilu's dances having good taste, then almost everybody has good taste. Because Paimon thinks everybody will love her performance. That's right. We all think she's amazing, too. Nilu is an absolute favorite among those of us who frequent the Grand Bazaar. For Outlanders, you have a great eye. Master Zubair, let's have a vote for the most outstanding audience members next time. <laughs> I think these two may win. Nonsense. It is not for us to determine the value of an audience. But, indeed, we could try giving gifts to people with particularly good taste. I heard there's a device in Fontaine called a camera that can record people's appearances as pictures. Such pictures would make superb gifts. Ooh, good idea. I wonder where we can find one. Uh, I don't want you giving pictures of me to everyone. I'm satisfied just being able to perform here. There's always a lot going on at the Grand Bazaar. Yeah, and that's why I love it here. Traveler and Paimon, could you help confirm if the letters were actually delivered? If for some reason they didn't receive the letters, then please tell everyone that there will be a feast here. Yeah, we can also check out how everything in Sumeru is going now. Hmm. When I wrote the letters, I heard that Dia was in Port Ormos, and Alhatham was at the Academia. As for Sino, we've only heard that he appears at the Academia from time to time. I'm not too sure about Rahman's whereabouts. My guess is that he's with Dia. As for Dunyazad, I just hope she's feeling better. I sent her a letter, but I was afraid of disturbing her. If you have time, Please ask about her for me. Okay, got it. Let's go, Traveler. Hmm. We haven't seen Al Haytham anywhere. Uh, let's ask that person over there. Ahem. Hey there. Have you seen Al Haytham around? Yes, it seems Scribe Al-Haytham has gone to the house of Dana. You should be able to find him there. But you're already the second group of people I've seen looking for him today. He must be quite the busy man. Oh? Who else was looking for him? Mr. Cave was just here asking about him. You wouldn't believe how terrible their relationship is. And now you two are here. Don't tell me everyone's here looking for gossip about the sages. No way! here on business. <laughs> ah, I see. Sorry, I thought maybe everyone's as interested in rumors about the sages as I am. Oh, Hatham should be around here somewhere, right? Oh, he's over there! But it looks like he might not have time for us. Just put down that worthless book and tell me what happened in the Academia. This is not just some worthless book. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to find a physical book like this in Sumeru? It doesn't matter. It's probably just another thing that you used your authority to get your hands on anyway. Just put it aside. Listen, I came back today only to hear that the sages have disappeared. Oh, you sound surprised. I thought you would already know the inside story. Would I be here asking you if I knew? You're the scribe, not me. So just tell me what you know already. Well, I almost became a sage. Huh? Oh, 
Don't sound too surprised now. You're the renowned Kave, light of the Kasharawar. Besides, as a master builder and craftsman, chances are you'll be appointed as a sage too. Hmm. Why do I feel like you don't really mean it? Huh. What makes you say that? Why would you question my heartfelt sincerity? Maybe it's because you've never said anything good about me before. Yeah, well I share a similar sentiment, and anyone who knows you as well as I do would surely do the same. Ah, oh, you... See? This is why I hate discussing anything with you. Your ridiculous and arrogant attitude always gets in the way. <laughs> it seems that you really can't stand my personality. Ha! <laughs> what was your first clue? Well, then you might as well move out of my house. Are you threatening me? Stooping to a new low, I see. Ugh, and don't change the subject. You, a sage? What a joke. The academia might as well just close tomorrow. Are they having a fight? <sighs> Forget what's going on with the academia. Haven't you been busy with your construction project? Tell me, when are you going to build yourself a mansion? Don't get me started. I get angry just thinking about it. So, what great building did our master architect work on this time? Like I need to tell you. Keep your nose out of my business. No, I think we deserve to know. Where were you when Sumeru needed you most? I was in the desert for a large project, but considering Haravatat's utter ignorance of architectural and aesthetic matters, you probably wouldn't understand. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. I can only pity the man who doesn't understand the first thing about beauty and romance. Unlike a true... Uh, hold on, uh, wait a second. What do you mean by when Sumeru needed me most? Well, while you were out fiddling around in the desert, many people came together to save Sumeru from a crisis. Ha! And you think I'd believe that? Look... All you really need to know is that Azar and all his accomplices have all been overthrown. Huh? What nonsense are you talking about? <laughs> it's no skin off my nose if you don't believe me. It's not like my Darshan was the one trying to apply for funding from the Grand Sage. Hmm. Yours though, on the other hand. You know what? I'll ask around. I'm sure someone knows what's going on here. You're dead if I find out you're lying to me. Oh, it's you two. What's the matter? We're running some errands for Nilu. Have you received her letter? Letter? Nilu said she sent out a letter inviting everyone to a celebration feast in two days at the Grand Bazaar. We'll also be celebrating Zaino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. If she addressed the letter to all Haytham of the Academia, then the letter should have gone to my office. I've been busy these days, so I haven't had time to check for any new mail at my office. I only now have some free time to attend to personal matters. Have you always been so busy with your work? Of course not. I'm only busy these days because several sages have been dismissed recently and the whole academia was practically turned upside down. Kainari told us they all went to train in the Avidia Forest. Apparently they will spend the rest of their lives there. That is already the best possible ending for the likes of them. Four of the six great sages were possessed by their desire for power and attempted to create a new god. In order to pull it off, they even imprisoned the other two rational sages. To imagine such things could take place in the academia. Hmm. I don't know where to begin. Yeah, you're right. Huh. Feels kind of strange to hear them called that after all this time. But then again... The six great schools sounded pretty impressive, too. Yes, at least that's how they're supposed to sound. It's said that when the Academia was first founded, the Dendro Archon herself established the six great schools, each representing one of the six different types of wisdom. Numerous Darshans have sprung up and faded. Only the six Darshans attaching themselves to the six great schools have stood the test of time and obtained permanent seats in the Academia. Now... The six Darshans are nearly synonymous with the six great schools, and the leaders selected for the schools are the six great sages. 
Among the six great sages, there is one central leader, the Grand Sage. Unfortunately, only the sages from Vahumana and Amorta remain now. They were imprisoned for opposing Azar and were only rescued after Azar's downfall. So who's managing things in the other four schools now? Do they need to find someone new? Yes. Normally, new sages are selected based on a strict set of criteria. Oh, didn't you just say something about becoming a sage? If they pick you, then we'd have a huge connection in Sumeru. Yes, about that. <clears throat> you didn't let me finish my sentence. The person in charge of personnel affairs nominated me to be the Grand Sage in place of Azar and help Lesser Lord Kusanali manage the academia. But I refused. Huh? But why? Ugh, can't you be a little more ambitious? I'm not even interested in being one of the six great sages. Like I said before, I don't like being a leader. Oh, all right. <sighs> so are you busy these days trying to find others to take the job? That's not my job either. I'm only responsible for handling important affairs within the academia before the new sages take office. <laughs> and the first thing I'll do is reject Kasharawar's application for funding. By the way, who was that other person just now? Is he your friend? Do we look like friends? Paimon doesn't know! That's why Paimon's asking! His name is Kave, My roommate. You could say he's the representative for Ksharwar scholars. Which is exactly why he always has so many problems. So everything that's happened recently must be a huge change for the people of Sumeru. Such is the work of the Academia Scribe. Well, anyway, no matter how busy you are, since you are our planner, remember to attend the celebration feast in two days. All right. I'll see you there. This is poor Ormos. Hmm. Now where could you... Is that Paimon I hear? Huh? Oh, it's been a while. How are you doing? Dinyarzad! It's been so long since we've seen you! I'm doing well. I can go as far as saying I have never been happier in my entire life. I don't know if you've heard, but Elazar has completely disappeared, and all the patients have recovered. Are you kidding? Knowing them and the connections they've got, I'm sure they've heard about it. Yeah! That's right. My lady is feeling better now, so I'm accompanying her for a walk. Why do you still call me that, Dia? You've already informed my father of your resignation. <laughs> I guess I'm just used to calling you my lady. Old habits die hard. Resignation? You mean you're quitting? Yeah, I might start losing my edge if I keep being a bodyguard for the Homayanis. You know that my parents and I are fond of you, and that we appreciate you very much. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be a problem if you wish to continue to be our bodyguard. <laughs> I'm not a woman that's easily persuaded. You should know that by now, my lady. When I took this job, I had already decided that I'd quit as soon as you'd recovered. It's time for me to get back out there and chase that horizon. So what are you going to do now if you're not going to be a bodyguard anymore? <laughs> I want to take a risky job and put my body to the test again. Huh? But we literally just finished one of the most dangerous jobs ever. Are you getting bored already? I know. If I hadn't joined in that plan with you, I wouldn't have come up with this idea. I guess I still get fired up by that feeling of going all out in a fight. It made me realize that I'm still a mercenary through and through. Life is short, and I'm happy that I got to be a part of that operation. But the whole thing also made me realize that there are still many problems in Sumeru. And as a desert dweller, I'm still not completely ready to settle down on this side of the wall. Well, I remember a friend had someone bring you a message. You mean I'll hate them? <laughs> I didn't expect him to still remember that. I thought he was joking. We just came from talking with I'll hate them at the academia. Did he tell you that he suggested that I come work at the academia? What? 
I heard that a czar and his cronies fell from power, and all hate them told me that now was a good time to find a job in the academia, but only if I wanted to. Whoa! Hyman can't see you being anything other than a mercenary. <laughs> me neither. Oh, but I think Dia would look great dressed up as a scholar. Ugh, ugh, forget about it. I wouldn't last ten seconds in there. I'll hate them probably just like the way I worked and knew I'm good in a fight. So he suggested I find some work in the academia. But you know, if you take him up on the offer, Sino might actually agree and let you become a mantra. Because you're super amazing! <laughs> The Matra have all the talent they need as long as they have Sino. I prefer to be free to live however I choose. In fact, I chose this job from the very start because I knew it'd be right up my alley. Even if being a mercenary means facing all kinds of danger. A lion has to return to the wild sooner or later. If anything, being your bodyguard has been unfamiliar territory for me. I don't want to see you go, but I'll respect your decision. I'm glad to hear you say that. Come on, no need for the sad face. It's not like we'll never meet again. Once the whole Dendro Archon thing is settled, everything in Sumeru will take a turn for the better. That makes me happy too. But a peaceful society will probably mean less demand for mercenaries like me. Before long, we'll be a dying breed. So I'd better get to work while I still can. Huh? Wait, wait a second. You make it sound like you're leaving well, no. Not yet, at least. I promised my lady I'd stick around until next week. So, have you been in Port Ormos this entire time? We were wondering if you had received a letter from Nilu. Oh, uh, did Nilu write to us? She heard that you were seen in Port Ormos, so she sent the letter here. Huh. It was probably sent to the inn that we're staying at. My lady has been very energetic lately, and keeps taking me on hikes, staying out even into the night. By the time we get back, the receptionist is usually off napping on the job. Right, and we tend to leave quite early in the morning, so the old man on duty is also usually dozing off. So what it really sounds like is that the person on duty is always asleep. I bet the letter's at the reception desk. I'll go check later. No wonder there wasn't a reply. You never received the letter. Good thing Nilu asked us to come and check on that. Ah, uh, sorry to make you two come all the way out here. It must be something important for Nilu to specifically write to us like that. Yes, she said they were preparing a victory feast in the Grand Bazaar, and we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. She was hoping you could come. Great, I'll be sure to attend. Count me in too, but is there some sort of dress code or anything for the feast? Can I just show up looking like this? Since it's being organized by Nilu, I don't think she'll be too picky about that. If anything, I think she wants to see us as our most natural selves. All right, then this is how I'll show up. The feast will be held in two days, so don't forget! Sure. Thank you so much for letting us know. We'll see you there. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know where Sino and Raman are? The General Mahamatra always comes and goes without a trace. Normally, no one knows his whereabouts. Oh. But last time we met, he mentioned that he had something to do in our village. You can try your luck there. As for Raman, your guess is as good as mine. I only remember he said that he had something to discuss with Sino. You can ask Sino when you meet him. Don't mention it. You better get going. We last visited Aru Village. Ah, there's Sino! Hmm. What brings you here? We recovered well, and Tanari agreed to let us leave, so now we're out and about again! It seems Kendarvaville's medical treatment is still as good as ever. Mm hmm. And Tanari is recovering well, too! That's good to hear. You're welcome. Tainari has excellent medical skills, and Kale is quite attentive. It was the best place for you. But why are you just standing here like a dead tree? 
I'm meeting some people. Oh! You mean Candace? I've already talked with Candace and the village chief. They're still at the usual place. You can go there if you'd like to see them. But you know one of the people I'm meeting as well. Oh, by King Deshret's blessing, my friend suddenly appears in the desert. <laughs> Don't tell me you've run into trouble and need us to help now. Roman! And, huh? Sitaria? Oh, you know me? Oh, well, uh, you're pretty famous in the academia. Don't worry, these are our friends. No need to be so guarded. I see. I'm doing well. Many good things have happened recently. Same here. Really, I feel that my whole life has started to shine after suddenly finding a new direction. Oh, tell us everything! Yeah, you go ahead. Alright, well, I suppose I should start by saying... I've decided to leave the Academia. What? It's not that I've given up on being a scholar. Instead, you could say I've found a new identity. I will no longer pursue research like a typical scholar, but I have not completely given up on my relationship to knowledge either. <laughs> I can see what you're saying now. Uh, what do you mean? I plan to leave the academia and return to teach here in the desert. Wow, so you want to become a teacher? Sitaria will return to support education here and teach people from the desert. She can't teach everyone on her own, but there are many of us Eremites all over Sumeru. She came to discuss a collaboration with me and hoped that I could bring her ideas to the Eremites. Yes, it's my hope that the Eremites can help me select a group of smart people with the best aptitude for teaching. I'll teach them, and after they've finished learning from me, they can go educate more people. That is the true meaning of education and the spreading of knowledge. The people of King Deshret suffer from sandstorms, exile, and ignorance. Miss Ataria is more than welcome to come teach here. Her arrival is like a star shining in the desert night. The stars have always guided caravans, thieves, soldiers, and travelers who get lost in the night. They lead those in the dark out of trouble and back to safety. Oh, please. Where's all of this coming from? I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed. You deserve these compliments. Mercenaries are accustomed to danger and don't fear death, which is why we recognize extraordinary actions the common people would easily overlook. Sataria's idea will bring much good to many people. At first, I feared it was destined to fail. Everyone knows that the Academia doesn't allow scholars to teach in the desert without permission. As you know, all knowledge is under their surveillance and control, and very few desert dwellers are as lucky as me. But what I heard at that time has been haunting my heart, as if there were lightning bolts constantly bombarding my soul. Sataria, you tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become. Sataria, why haven't you gone home? Never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. Miss... These words sparked something in me, and I knew that I had to bring something back to my people after going home. I gathered up the courage to approach the Grand Sage, only to find that he was no longer at the Academia. Lord Sino told me that Azar didn't belong there anymore. Azar has received much needed punishment. Though, if you ask me, it may have been too light. <sighs> you probably have already heard. Lord Sino helped me obtain permission to leave the Academia for the desert, and accompanied me here to discuss collaboration with members of the Eremites. My plan was able to go smoothly thanks to him and Ramon. You're all doing so much for the desert! Aside from that, I also have some other business to discuss with Sino. Lesser Lord Kusanali has allocated many resources to support and develop the desert. I've done some business for her, and part of it required the assistance of the Eremites. I applied for a few batches of educational materials from the Academia, and sent them to several groups in the desert, as instructed by Lesser Lord Kusanali. 
I believe the people will make good use of them. That's exactly what the people here need. Physical books and other related items. If it weren't for Sino and Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'm afraid we'd never be able to get our hands on them. Apart from this, the Academia is also recruiting scholars that are willing to teach in the desert. I'll let you and Tatarian know as soon as I have any more news. We must be persistent about this, and maintain these resources to ensure long-term effectiveness. This is the first time in hundreds of years we've had a glimmer of hope. I think this may be the turning point for the desert. Remember these words. Here lies our faithful priest, Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. I hope people with wisdom like that priest will rise again among the desert dwellers. Then we'll once again see the wisdom and glory that once shook the world. Enough about us. Are you here to discuss some business, too? No, not at all. We're actually here on behalf of Nilu. Nilu wanted to write to everyone, but she wasn't sure where the letters should be sent, so she asked us to come find everyone personally. A celebration feast will be held in two days at the Grand Bazaar. She hopes that all of you will be able to attend. At the feast, we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. Uh, although, judging from your appearance, it seems you've already been reinstated. Paimon thought you would only start working for the Academia after the feast. Celebration? Feast? It's the first I've heard of it. Tainari was right. She really didn't know. <laughs> this feast is for you, Sino. Sounds to me like you'll have to be there. <laughs> it's rare to see that kind of expression from Lord Sino. You must not like feasts very much. No, not really. But I'll go. Well, I still have a lot to handle here. Besides, I need to look after Miss Sataria in the desert, so I'll have to pass. I'm afraid I won't be able to join you. Although, if you'd be so kind, please give a message to Miss Nilu for me. The message is... I'm sorry for how I treated you before, but now I understand the beauty of your dance. It's like a light shining in the sky. You and the art you symbolize are not only beautiful, but also lively and powerful, so much so that it was prohibited. Please keep dancing, and someday, I'll be able to appreciate your art in person. Okay, we've got all that down! Our job here is complete as well! Oh, Sino, remember, party's in two days! Make sure you're there! Got it. Everybody's already here! Looks like we're the last ones to arrive. I'm here. Ah, there you are. Well, look who finally decided to show up. You look like you came here immediately after finishing up some work. I'm very happy to see you here. But we're not late, are we? It's just that everyone else arrived ahead of time. I propose that the last one who arrived be put in charge of today's speeches. Nah, there won't be any speeches today. Oh, really? Well, even better. Come join us over here. Let's share some great food and drinks, and chat about all sorts of fun things. Everything looks quite good. Wow! Paimon can't wait! Traveler, just look at all the delicious food here! Delicious! Oh, this grilled meat tastes amazing! The food was specially prepared for you by everyone in the Grand Bazaar. And we have gifts that were sent by the residents of Sumeru City when they heard we were holding a feast. Everyone that came said that you saved Sumeru, and wanted me to thank you all on their behalf. Ah, feels kind of nice to be seen as a hero. I could get used to this. Being a bodyguard is also a hero's job. 
You've always been amazing, Dia. <laughs> My lady sure has a way with words. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. And I'm happy to meet everyone that participated in the great plan. Don't mention it. Come to think of it, we've really done something impressive together. It's unbelievable. We owe it to our abilities. And luck. Really? Why do I remember everybody thinking that luck was against us and feeling like we hardly had a chance of succeeding? That's how I remember it, too. It's luck that brought us together, and it was luck that let us form a team. Then, it took even more luck for us to formulate a plan and implement it successfully. Moreover, judging from the results, everything worked out well. Yeah. Everyone gave it their all when it mattered most. It was almost like a performance. We took the stage and put on our best show. Everyone played their part, and thanks to everyone's efforts, the performance was a great success. So, would you say we're good actors too? It's such a blessing that Lesser Lord Kusanali was able to return to power at the Academia. Yes! Even after being abandoned and neglected so many times, she's finally returned. Uh-huh. Lesser Lord Kusanali once used all her power in a great disaster, which resulted in her losing all her wisdom and memories of the past. The Academia basically abandoned her because of it. This should be something everybody should remember. Uh huh? You look surprised. I didn't say anything wrong, did I? No, everything you said is correct. <sighs> That's good. Something wrong? Yeah, what's with that face? You knew all of this already. <clears throat> Even if those two giants of the Academia are here, I still have to say it. Those sages really have some nerve. 500 years ago, Lesser Lord Kusanali used all her power for the people of Sumeru. And what did they do in return? If you bite the hand that feeds you, don't act surprised when it turns into a knuckle sandwich, right, Sino? Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but their treatment of Lesser Lord Kusanali calls for a more severe punishment. You could simply tell Lesser Lord Kusanali that you wish to have Azar and his accomplices severely punished. I respect our deity's decision and won't interfere in any way. While we're on this topic, why didn't you accept the Academia's invitation to become the Grand Sage? Are you trying to say that I'm fit to be a sage? <laughs> Not at all. But every person handling this election process has said that you are the most suitable candidate to lead the Academia right now. Why? Because he dethroned Azar from power? <clears throat> Could you try to put it another way? This is a good thing, yet you're making it sound like I overthrew Azar for my own personal gain. But seriously, though, I always wondered if you had some personal motives behind it. I did have my own motive, but it had nothing to do with being a sage. If the rules of our nation were suddenly cast by the wayside, then it wouldn't be long until chaos ensued. I had no intention of letting their dreams disrupt my life. By that, you mean your life working as the Academia's scribe? Precisely. Uh, wait. Is that all? So, that's the only reason why you joined us and came up with all those plans? It's reason enough. You've certainly got quite the personality. You flatter me. All right then. How about you? You've already resumed work as the General Mahamatra, right? That's right. Will you be happy with that life? It's not about being happy. There are merely a lot of things that I must do. Even so, keep your spirits up and try to be happy, okay? And try to smile more every day, just like I'm doing now. <sighs> Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Ah, 
Ah, there you are, traveler. Well, how is it? Are you enjoying the feast today? If there's anything you're unhappy with, just let me know. I'll be sure to take note of it. <laughs> That's good. It's the first time I've ever invited so many exceptional people to one place. I was a little nervous myself. You see, every guest here is quite extraordinary. It's unbelievable that we've got everyone together here. Almost like a fairy tale. Make sure you live it up tonight. I'll be happy as long as you're enjoying yourselves. I'm honored to have her think of me this way. If I have a chance in the future, I would really like to invite her to one of my performances. I can't explain why, but I just feel elated right now. Thank you. The atmosphere here is good. And everything is delicious. <laughs> yeah. I don't often come to such places. But it feels quite good. I have a lot to handle these days. Otherwise, I could show you around. <laughs> There's always next time. We're friends after all. <sighs> this feast is pretty good. I like it. I seldom participate in such lively gatherings, but the atmosphere here is quite good. No. This gathering today has a unique meaning. The Grand Bazaar is lively because the people here feel happiness from the bottom of their hearts. Unlike the farces at the Academia, that happiness is an emotion that'll be forever alien to those bookworms who have driven themselves insane by studying. Hmm. I seem to have taken both keys when I left the house. Hmm. <laughs> oh well. My lady, the grilled meat over there is delicious. Have you tried it? Yes, I also tried some fruit just now. Oh, they're very sweet. What an amazing place to relax. No wonder everybody likes to rest at the Grand Bazaar. You said it. Oh, look who else is here. Hello, oh, I'm so happy Nilu invited everybody. Oh, now I have the chance to meet all the heroes. Hey, less of that polite chit-chat and more eating and drinking. The feast is about having fun, not stuffy formalities. Hey, what's wrong? Your head is starting to droop. Hey, you can't just fall asleep here. Paimon will go find something delicious for you to eat. You wake up once you've put something yummy in your tummy. Of course, just wait here for Paimon. <laughs> it's me. Mm -hmm. You may blame me for being a bit too self-indulgent. I was thinking about talking with you, and the next thing I knew, I had made a connection with you. The connection between us is amazing. It's like flora and the fence it grows upon. I heard there's an amazing celebration feast today at the Grand Bazaar. I wanted to have a look for myself, so I snuck in. Lately, I've been so busy dealing with all the fallout from recent events, so I really haven't had any free time. Although you've already helped me with a lot, there's still one more thing I hope you can help me with. Please say thank you to everyone for me. Uh, oh, is it not 
not convenient for you to do that for me. But if I just show up all of a sudden, people will become all quiet and stiff, won't they? What if I end up scaring them and ruining this wonderful feast? That'd be the last thing I want. Hmm... Let me think about it. Okay! Yes, I have. You said I should go thank everyone as myself, right? So... I've decided to borrow your body for the time being. Please don't blame me. The floor also climbs up to the fence to get closer to the sky. Everyone! Are you awake now? Paima was just about to bring you the food! It's me. Huh? That voice! Nehida? Uh, hold up, what's going on? I didn't expect to have a conversation with the consciousness of Lesser Lord Kusanali in the Grand Bazaar. Interesting. Is this also a part of the feast? No, no, of course not. Are you... Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, you... You know who I am? Yes. I already know every one of you. Nilu, Alhatham, Sino, Dia, Paimon, and Dunyarzad. Lesser... Lord Kusanali? I took the liberty of occupying the Traveler's body so that I could thank all of you in person. Thank you so much for rescuing me. Even if that meant placing your own safety in peril and taking the risk of becoming enemies with the Academia. The Sages, the Doctor, the Balladier, and even the entirety of Sumeru. Without you, without any of you, I would have been in a much more difficult situation. Had you not helped me to resolve the crisis, not only I, but Sumeru and even the entirety of Tevat would have suffered great misfortune. People refer to you as the heroes who managed to rescue a god. I'm quite fond of this name. It not only explains your identities, but also bears witness to your relationship with me. Please, allow me to present to you my most sincere gratitude. Lesser Lord Kusanelli, you... You have done so much for Sumeru, and I, I... I didn't even have a chance to do anything for you. Ten years odd. The suffering you endured during your illness is also proof of you being with me and praying for me. Thank you. You don't need to be so ceremonious. It's always been my duty to protect you. This is how the relationship between the Academia and Dendro Archon should be. We just did what was necessary and set things back on the right path. You're an Archon, but you act so humble. You really don't need to be so polite with us. I... I'm honored to have been able to take part in this plan. I hoped you liked the dance I dedicated to you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah.
She should be in the academia right about now. If you have any questions, now's your chance to ask. Nahida! Hello, Traveler and Paimon. <sighs> what a fantastic night. I'm still immersed in all the happiness and joy, like a candle floating on water. So are we, and that's why we're here to talk with you. Is there anything you want to know? After recent events, the Akasha can no longer function as it used to. I've given it some thought, and have decided to shut it down permanently. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. The Akasha's centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. I don't think this is good for Sumeru. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, they will soon understand that this life is more suitable for them. And as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. The former sages have received their punishment, but the new sages have yet to be selected. I will oversee the process personally. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on academics. Sumeru needs such leaders more than ever. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far too long. I've already taken some measures to address this. It will take some time to rebuild everything, but no matter if it's culture, friendship, or trust, we will rebuild it. You mean, what happened after the doctor put you to sleep? Not exactly. The top-ranked Fatui Harbingers, up to number three, possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate, the Heavenly Principles. In fact, the Heavenly Principles has been quiet since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. I used this point as leverage against the doctor. I told him that the Heavenly Principles may be awakened if I destroyed Enosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. I assumed that the Heavenly Principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take place. And as for what I exchanged for the Enosis? The exchange served as both punishment for the Doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the God of Wisdom. He's still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. I know you have many misgivings about him, but as someone who had become a god, he has retained a number of very useful features. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do any evil. In addition, there are still some mysteries left in him. Some things may be very clear from my perspective, but he is still yet to understand them himself. His future will be determined by fate. Is that where you're headed next? Fontaine, the Nation of Justice? As far as I know, that nation operates in a judicial system. Does their Archon personally judge people? No, there's a Chief Justice in Fontaine. Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Fosalor, won't preside over individual trials. However, even then, Fosalor will still make herself present at just about every trial. It seems that she just likes to immerse herself in that sort of atmosphere. As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got... uh... A very unique personality. Are you sure? Isn't there something else you haven't asked about yet? Huh? You mean... About your brother. 
While you were resting at Gandarvaville, I took some time to perform an Ermin Soul search for information on your brother. Yeah! Isn't Ermin Soul a repository for all the information and memories of Tvat? So there shouldn't be anything on her or her brother. This is true in your case. Ermin Soul indeed does not have any information on you. However, there must be something different about your brother. Because, as it turns out, the world has recorded information on him after all. What? There's only one possible explanation. He belongs to this world. But... Nothing about this makes any sense! Wasn't this your first trip to Tevat? Hmm... According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, he began his journey through the Seven Nations of Tevat. But just as his journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Ermansel records on him suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean, fuzzy? Did something happen to him? All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating his fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that, who knows what else they're capable of. But even that wouldn't explain how he somehow comes from this world. Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? Paimon's never heard of it. Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? A very important part of the intel was about this world's Descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Traveler, you are Tevat's fourth Descender. Huh? So the Fatui count three other Descenders before the Traveler, and her brother isn't even one of them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first Descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other Descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. <sighs> Paimon's head's about to burst from all this crazy new information. And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the God of Wisdom. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew, and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. I'm sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. Alright, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes, and maybe I'll appear in your dreams. <laughs>